playing super aggressive, so we're gonna have to see if... Oh, the SBS cancel off the Lily. Already off to a kind of banging start. Here we go. Yeah, they're just going for it. There's gonna be a whole lot of swing. I do not think anyone studying this set for neutral will learn very much. It is time to hit. We wanna see what to do in advantage, though. Here we are. Gates is the first stage as well, I think. Uh, Big ol' blast zones. Good for oh, Absa yeah. to not get uh, Tether Fair. Stages by layout that also invite that uh, very aggressive play for both players. And Penguin with some expert wave dashing on that Absa means that uh, Lily's kind of hard because Absa's wave dashing goes big far. Yeah, that's, that's always been a feature of oh. play that I've liked the most, but I'm going to see a little bit more of it Rare in the next stock. confirm, I feel like. That one's, that one's interesting. Okay, has been on point with a lot of these confirms out of Vine specifically. She's mixed up her options constantly, yet still manages to find kills. And they will continue to run at each other and hit. <laughs> Perhaps the most even set in history as they both just go one for one for one for one. It's got to end in someone's favor eventually, though. Blood is in the Rolls air. Rolls past the Lily actually removes the mark. And we are back to center. Continuing the offensive, oh, another the up. up. Elfie's looking solid. Is there a world where I lose to first and second for seven? <laughs> it might happen. Unless. That's the tether here. Where's yeah. she going? Good tech, though. Gets resources back. But holding super far in for no reason. Just Dia is in, and that stock's gone. That's Wanted to what? hit. Dia out of street, Pluto want to hit. All right, taking the damage there off the Nair, but now no mark applied. Gonna have to get a new one. And that's the game. I don't really know Very how. Good. She just drops I mean, like a rock. You're, when you're playing that kind of high octane game like that, it's hard to just get your bearing straight when you're off stage. You really just want to go and get back to it and hit that fast pace of play, which means you're gonna SD. Yeah, listen, her, her hand, her head, and her heart might be in it. Her hands need to get there too. Yep. All right, but. As predicted, very fast-paced game. Uh, Penguin kind of struggling to get good footing, but when she gets those hits, boy, do they hit. Just needs to keep up the momentum. Looking good so far on Jules Vale. We've only played starters this set. My biggest concern for Penguin happens to be what I feel is one of the, the strongest qualities of Elki's play today, and that is the resets. Yep. Penguin having to react to all the different options that Maple is bringing to the table. That's a tall ask for anyone. It doesn't matter if it's one of the best players in the game. Yeah, and I mean, the less you play against Elkies, the worse it gets. Just kind of inventing new stuff as we speak, and could this be a kill? Boom. Yes, sir. Uh, it's just it's just tough. It's just tough out here against <laughs> this kind of Maple play. You're, that character is everywhere. They're just rapid-fire reaction tests. Like, with all of that pressure on you, like, this is not the kind of character that you want to be tested on. And just when you think you've got an opening, the Maple is parrying, despite being the fastest character, which is always irritating to witness. <laughs> There's only so much you can do when she's, oh like, God. actively running into oh, your offensive no. options to parry them. Setting herself up for kill after this kill. This is horrifying. We might see the Penguin Ori if this goes to a quick game three, but it is still possible for Penguin to just kick Elkies a bunch of times and bring it back. If she gets the opportunity this game. No no resources, but Elkies going way off stage, so the fortunes have been reversed on the stock. But still, no kill. And they are still hitting, but when both players are running at each other and hitting, the one in the lead is very favored. Yes, sir. That wrapped for some reason. <laughs> we are continuing to do maple things that are perhaps illegal and certainly unethical, but the stock is taken. Still a long hill for Penguin to climb on this game, too. If she's looking Does to make that tether out. somehow works out? It's still keeping positioning. That's what I'm telling you. Is this it? Her there. work off the tethers has been fantastic. Excellent Good. DI for Incredible her. DI. Best possible. All right. Still living. No dodge here. Penguin needs it, but the platform has sold her up the river and saved Elky's resources. So Penguin going to have to do some crazy stuff, and it doesn't work. Oh, my God. We're just going. <laughs> Tether seed, air dodge read. Bye. In that last 15 seconds alone, Penguin made so many correct decisions. And the, the freight and still train died. still runs you over. You have un you may have untied the ropes on your arms and your legs and every other part of the body, but we only need one to get it done against the train. Now Elky's sizing up for a 3-0. We are going to the third starter stage, throwing a seat backwards to throwing a coin into the well. <laughs> 
mark already applied. Oh, it's gonna be instant. Like, Algeus has been so consistent with setting up the mark, whether it's for resets or just, like, randomly neutral. Like, making sure that she always has an option to close the distance. There is a world where Elkies wins this tournament having lost to only Throne Orc. It is physically possible and getting more likely with every stock we witness. As the one seed getting disposed of in this loser's semis. I'm not gonna lie, Penguin kinda, kinda get slapped out here. <laughs> I mean, against Maple is generally when we see her struggle in, in this manner, but this has been like especially tough. And here's the parry, double root, continuing. Still no mark applied, but there it is. We'll just throw seven seeds in one. We need one. All right, that's one way to cleanse a mark. All right, not that much damage built up either. Really good position for Penguin to be in. Force the approach, but you know Elgis is coming for you. It's all about what you do after that point. And see, that's what I mean. Elgis actively putting himself in positions where she knows the hitbox ought to be and preparing the parry so that she can go in for big damage. It's just kind of that that real rivals neutral grime where you're dominating neutral and you know that your opponent wants to hit. So just when you think they have advantage, you throw the parry because you haven't done it in a while and it's gonna work. Hard punish. Still though, even looking game, Elkies with good DI off stage, but okay, good DI there from Penguin. Mark applied, doesn't matter. Very radical shift in the way that Penguin is approaching the matchup now. She's not swinging as often, but swinging very meaningfully when she does press some buttons. It's probably the best possible answer to Elkies, given yeah. how she has built up a lot of her momentum. From. That is kind of the curse of Elkies, though, because the swing is good, then you run into the parry, but Penguin just making sure that's not an option. We have a set right here. Penguin's staring down the barrel of the gun and playing perfectly in that game. Two Elkies counter picks here, though. We are looking at Fire Capital. We are looking at Endless Abyss. We are looking at Air Armada. That one gets the ban. We might be looking at Tempest. That one gets the ban. It is between Capital and Abyss here for Elkies. Been getting decent money off the platform, but not necessary. So Abyss might be in play. DSR bans come out as well. Just to make sure. Genuinely concerned with the... Yeah. Uh, where we go, not even so much as like the platform layer, but like giving it a thing, denying the platforms. I saw the hover over at this, but it's pretty okay. Uh, going for the more vertical playstyle with four platforms out here, definitely something to consider. And kind of like keep, keep that, uh, those avenues for aggressive play open with more lanes to attack from. Double dunk not quite working out against Abs's floatiness, but the conversion is continuing despite that. And Penguin's already in like basically 90. Yeah, I mean, hey, listen, it might not be a stock, but it still sets up into a stock. Lily on the platform, but Elkie's kind of helping Penguin out with it. Tether coming out here. Ooh, goes for a reset off the up air. Penguin avoiding. And now in the driver's seat for a brief moment, but Texas Center. Just trying to stay mobile. The, the damage isn't right. Again, I think this is due to the adaptation from the previous game. Not swinging as much, fair. but if she can make the swings matter, it'll be worth it. She's just gonna actually do some swinging here. And Penguin didn't even do full DI out there. That fair kill from basically on the stage. Pretty high knockback spike, considering how easily you can combo into it. <laughs> this is the world we live in. Maple's and Penguin world. respond. Living in it. Especially after Genesis, it is a Maple's world. Perhaps that is why Elkies has not played any of her insane roster of characters besides this one since dropping into losers. Oh, is that the stock? Looks a lot like Beautiful it. Beautiful coverage from Elkies. Oh, good looking counter pick. We have still only played on starter stages, by the way. That's all they need. Looking like an amateur tournament and everything except the gameplay with how many starters we're seeing. <laughs> Hesitation okay. from the approach from Elkies. It was good hesitation because the moment she does try to move in, errantly blows up for it. If we want to see the historic Penguin losers, we will have to see a historic reverse three stock in this game. It is looking unlikely as the seconds tick by, but here it is. It's the Sarah's fun of the year. Oh, air. that's tragic, but that just barely kill. catching with up special manages to allow Penguin to continue her assault. Oh boy. Yolo Fair comes out, Elkie's knocked high up. Lily's still out here, Penguin not able to dash parry it because Absa's dash is booty. He said it was long, he never said it was good. The wave dash is good, the normal dash might not even be there. 
He's tagging this program. Yeah. Could this be oh, it? There the it is. Going for it all. The Akashi line is what takes the <laughs> stock here. Penguin needs something crazy here, but Elkies only needs a dash attack. That's it. Tether's on over. Gets her kill. Elkies stays on the setup. Hooray. Penguin falls at fourth. Mm -hmm. Starbos, the last bastion of MDVA. Could we see a NorCal Grand Finals and me getting seventh place, losing the first and second place, which is kind of stupid and I hate it, but we're still one set left to, to decide such a thing. It really is something, huh? Mm, yep. And not the first time I've been through it, but it never feels good. Such as the competitive yeah, it's life. Kind of the Giga special. He got like ninth or something, losing the Cake and Penguin. Yeah. <laughs> Just win, haha. Could have won that LQ set, guy like me. <laughs> the Y set, not so much. Everyone's still around, still in high spirits. Yeah. Genuinely love to see it. Getting kind of late out here, but we are staying stocked and locked in the venue with a nice little Xanadu crowd. And many more on the friendly setups off screen. Well, kind of on screen. This is a pretty wide shot. I was bringing this up earlier, how, like, you would think that a, a Rivals 1 tournament in a post-Rivals 1 world wouldn't have the kind of turnout that Hitfall 2.5 did. Mm. But, like... It just kind of happened. The tournament was at 20 until it was at 70. It really feels like a, like a quick change on that. Everyone just suddenly was like, oh, yeah, Rivals, I like that game. Yeah, I think it's, it's, I think it's mainly people just wanting to pop out because...